Okay. So, so how does it all work? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to build a model, a mathematical model of how a single neuron works. We're going to make it as simple as we can, provided it's enough to learn and to do, you know, the inferences that we need it, you know, to do. Okay. And then we're going to put these neurons, these models of neurons together into big networks, and then, and then we're going to train those networks. Okay. And at the end of the day, what we have is in some sense a miniature brain, if you will. Okay. Of course, much simpler than the real one, but hopefully with some of the same properties. Okay. So now a neuron, right, is a very interesting kind of cell. Right? It's a cell that actually kind of looks like a tree, right? There's the cell body, and then there's the trunk of the tree is what is called the axon. And then the branches, uh, you know, are called dendrites. Right? And the, but the, but where, where neurons get very different from trees is that the, branch, the, the branches of one neuron actually connect back with the roots of another. Or in fact, with the roots of many others. And that's how you get a big network of neurons. And where, where, the, where the dendrites of one neuron join the dendrites of another, that's called a synapse. And to the best of our knowledge, the way humans learn, everything you know is encoded in the strengths of the synapses between your neurons. Okay? So if the synapse is strong, then, uh, you know, uh, so, so let me backtrack for just a second. The way this works is that, you know, the neurons communicate via electric discharges down their axons. Okay, literally an electric discharge called an action potential. And what happens is that if you, if you look at all the charge coming into a neuron through its various synapses, if it exceeds a certain threshold, then that neuron itself fires. And of course, then it sends, you know, you know current to the, to the neurons downstream. Okay? And the synaptic process itself involves chemistry and whatnot, but those details don't, you know, are not important for us. Okay? So, so what's going to happen is that, you know, the, the, the learning basically happens when a neuron helps to make another neuron fire. And then the strength of the connection goes up. This is, you know, this is, this is called Hebb's rule. Okay? And as far as we know, this is how all our knowledge is encoded, is in how strong the synapses are. If the neurons fire together a lot, then the synapses become stronger, and it becomes easier for the first neuron to fire the second one. 